Third down and 11. Oklahoma State active on defense. Young gets away. Great punt fake. Gets the first down and then some. Say goodbye to Vince Young. Yeah, it has been 10 years since the Texas Longhorns took that yellow brick trip to Pasadena with Superman Vince Young and company and won the national championship. And it's been six years since Texas has played for another championship. That's also the last time they won a conference title. And that was with Colt McCoy. Yeah, those teams had terrific quarterback play in 05 and 09. And yeah, they're probably a little bit more talented back then than what they have now. But the big thing about now that Oklahoma, my Sooners are discovering, just like Texas, is that, you know, it's hard to win all the time. And also, too, that the Big 12 got better. I mean, let's face it, you know, Baylor back then wasn't the Baylor that they are now. And who knew that TCU, coming from the Mountain West Conference, was going to play at a very high level? Yeah, we saw TCU play at a high level back then, but mainly, you know, we thought perhaps it could have been lack of competition. Well, after last season, after tying um, Baylor for the conference title, we know now that those two teams, TCU and Baylor, are where Oklahoma and Texas used to be. Now, the Longhorns last season, you know, hired Charlie Strong. And in the beginning, Strong made his presence felt when he kicked several players off the team and suspended some others because they weren't living up to his standards. In the beginning, you saw struggles. You know, they you know, got blown out by BYU again. Um, they lost a heartbreaker to UCLA. But as the season came along, Texas was playing better, especially on defense, and they should have beaten Oklahoma. I'm going to admit, as a Sooner fan, you know, Texas should have won that game, but OU had big plays, and Texas had too many mistakes, and OU was able to get out with a win. And we did see Texas, though, see their hard work pay off with victories, with wins at Texas Tech, at Oklahoma State, and they upset West Virginia at home, and at that time, the Mountaineers were top 25 in the country. But at the end of the year, Texas went back down, getting blown out by both TCU and in the bowl game against Arkansas to finish at 6-7. and seven. So you can tell Charlie Strong there were some good things, especially for the defense, who was top 20 in the country, including top 10 against the pass. But the offense really had some um, bad moments. In fact, too many of them um, ranking outside the top 100 in several categories. And by the way, offense only averaged 21 points per game. But we are going to start with the defense. And last season, um, you got to give it up to Vance Bedford's defense, the defensive coordinator, as we saw Texas um, look at times dominant, um, especially against the pass. Uh, but they do lose a couple of good ones in Quandre Diggs and um, Thompson. Uh, both those guys, very valuable. But they're both gone now. So enter Duke Thomas, and you know he's the only guy that had at least 20 starts in his career that returns for Texas. The Longhorns are going to be young in so many spots, but I do think over time it's going to pay off. But Duke Thomas is one of those uh, few veterans on this team, and again, 20-plus uh, starts in his career. And also, too, uh, Dylan um, Haynes, you returned him at the strong safety, had four picks a year ago for UT. Um, but I'm going to mention quite a few freshmen during this uh, preview because you know Charlie Strong believes that the uh, future is now, and he believes that you know if you have players that are vying for the same position, you know freshmen um, going against a junior or a senior, and they're both on the same level, you know he's going to be more inclined to start the younger guy because the younger guy has a chance to uh, develop um, more over a period of time, and you know the juniors had an opportunity to um, get to where um, you know to, to do more than what the freshman has already done. So Strong, you know more times than not, gives a benefit of the doubt to the younger guy. And John Bonney is one of those freshmen that I think is going to play right away at the nickelback, but they could also use him as a corner. So John Bonney is a name to watch out for. And free safety, by the way, another guy to mention is uh, Jason Hall. Now, linebackers, of course, the name in Austin people are talking about, for good reason, Malik Jefferson, an all-star stud, high school last year out of Mesquite, um, highly talented you know, player na nationwide, He's already added some weight, which is good because, you know, originally 6'3", um, weighing not even 220, pretty pretty thin for a linebacker. When you look at him, as a matter of fact, he's not even going to look like a linebacker. He looks more like a big receiver. But trust me, he plays linebacker, and he can also cover, but he will lay a hit on you. Good technique. He'll play this year, and he could possibly start. That's Malik Jefferson. 
Texas, though, we mentioned um, they have some players to replace. Six overall on the defense. We mentioned the two guys in the uh, defensive backfield. Also at linebacker, losing Steve Edmond and Jordan Hicks. They were tackling machines throughout their career, um, especially last year. So you have to replace them. But you have two seniors who could very well step into their shoes and do fine. That's Dalton Santos and also two uh, Peter Jenkins. And another freshman to watch out for for Texas is going to be um, Eddie Freeman. The defensive line, to me, is going to be the area to really watch out for because of the losses of both Cedric Reed and Malcolm Brown, two uh, valuable gems up front. But Asan Ridgeway shows the potential that he could pick up from where those guys left off. Also, uh, Nason um, Hughes, you'll have him as well. And uh, Desmond Jackson, you know, trouble with the foot injury last year. Um, he should be ready to go this time for a full season. That will really help Vance Bedford's um, defense as well. So, you know, Texas, you lose six players on that side of the ball, but they have done a pretty good job in recruiting in this area. If there's one area, again, I would probably be concerned about if you're a Longhorn fan, it would be the defensive backfield. It appears that they've got the less proven depth in that area. They can ill afford any injuries in that department in particular. But again, they were good last year, only giving up 23 points per game and only allowing 348 per game, uh, which was tops in the Big 12. That's the good news. And again, they got 40 sacks a year ago, too. So I don't know if they can do that again this year with the new guys. But these new guys, I think, over time are going to prove to be the foundation for Texas defensive football. If you look, by the way, at the offense, is there potential there? I'm not so sure about that. And I'm just going to be quite honest. Again, last year, only 21 points per game. Um, and Tyrone Swoops, who at times last year um, didn't really look like he knew what was going on, he, he still like. It still looks like he's going to be the guy at quarterback, and maybe he's improved some since. Maybe he showed something in, in spring. I'm not sure. 13 TDs, had 11 picks a year ago, 58% completion. Um, that's not going to make any coach, especially Charlie Strong, feel good entering the fall. Um, so from what I've heard, though, it's still Swoop's job to lose, although Gerard Hurd has gained some ground. Hurd is the better athlete of the two. He's better on his feet. He's faster. But in terms of his arm strength and definitely in terms of accuracy, he's not there yet. And that's why Swoops, I think, will still be the starter. Although Strong has already said it in the opener, which is a tough one for Texas at Notre Dame, you're going to see both play. Backfield, you lose Malcolm Brown, but you do have Jonathan Gray. Jonathan Gray, of course, in high school was a five-star athlete. He was, he was fantastic. And at times, he's shown some glimpses of greatness, but he's got to stay healthy for a full season. Last year, had 600 yards rushing. But again, the potential's there for Gray, but he's got to stay healthy. And uh, Deontay Foreman, they're talking about this guy um, being a, a quality backup. He's not the kind of guy that's going to run in between the, the guard and the tackle, but he can get to the outside quick, more like a scat back. Um, so you've got a little bit of power in gray and speed, and you have Foreman who gives you even more speed and more versatility. Wide receivers, uh, there's plenty there, but they do lose the top two from a year ago, and John Harris and Jackson Shipley. Marcus Johnson is your leading returner. He had 300 yards a year ago, 27 receptions and a touchdown. Again, he's your leading returning receiver. You know, Dace Johnson probably, you know, has the most potential but remember last year, got that four-game suspension, so you didn't see a whole lot of him and did not play very well during the spring game. Uh, so Dace Johnson, though, he's had, he has work to do. Um, Armonte Foreman, there's there's um, potential there. And also, too, with uh, Dorian Leonard and Ryan Newsom. And we'll see how those guys fit into the mix. And another guy that Texas hopes will fit into the mix is the tight end. That is uh, Devonair Clarington. Biggest thing for him, he's got to be eligible. He's not been cleared yet. He's got to retake the ACT. Um, his original score was high, but it didn't really coincide with what he did grade-wise. So that got brought into scrutiny. So the NCAA says you're going to have to take that again. And I'm assuming if he can get a high enough score, he'll be eligible to go this fall. So that still, though, is an unsolved mystery there. Plenty of experience coming back on the offensive line for UT. In fact, they returned pretty much the whole bunch. Cedric Flowers is back. Kent Perkins will have Marcus. Um, Hutchins, too, and Taylor Doyle. And another freshman that saw some action during spring ball, uh, that was uh, Connor Williams. So uh, plenty of uh, freshmen to go around. And one other guy to mention as far as freshmen for Texas and offensive side is John Burt. Watch out for that guy. He could definitely be an impact player, you know, a guy that um, is already working with the first team. Schedule for Texas, it is difficult. Beginning with the opener against a very experienced Notre Dame team, We'll see how that flies for UT. Um, then the next two games, I think they'll get wins over Rice and Cal, although the Golden Bears have a good offense. 
Oklahoma State is an intriguing opener. Cowboys are probably undefeated entering that game in Austin. The road team has won that rivalry each of the last six years, if you can believe that. TCU, more than likely going to be a loss. Oklahoma, that's anybody's game. Of course, it's a rivalry game in Dallas. Again, we mentioned how Texas has not played Oklahoma the last two years, even though Texas lost on the scoreboard a year ago. Second half of the schedule doesn't look as bad as the first, but you got to go to West Virginia. Mountaineers will be much better this year. The game's in Morgantown. And close out the season uh, with the showdown in Waco against Baylor, who figures to be a college football playoff contender. I've got Texas going 6-6, six and six, but this number will pretty much change if the Longhorns can develop that young talent pretty quickly. If so, look for the Longhorns to surprise in 2015. But 2016 and 2017, with the recruits that Charlie Strong continues to pick up, could very well be the season that we see Texas look a little bit more like the Texas that we saw during the 2000s. Thanks for watching.